Noi, oamenii cu ei antipânii, shake-n, hap o picuță cu ei, tot cu ei. So, my name is Tony Yan. I have to say my last name because too many Tony are then tag. So, my last name is Mini, it's the safe, 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 okay? Let us start the second round panel discussion. I'm the host of the second round discussion. So uh, today the topic is the very long sentence, co-creating uh, co with advantage to accelerate domain focus IoT deployment. Okay. So uh, we have to uh, co-create it before. Talk. Uh, we talk about co-create before. We have to talk about new value with the IoT cooperation. So many companies have been uh, promoting IoT valuable uh, business in various forms in, for a long time. But uh, however, you should not overlook that IoT business cannot, eat, uh, cannot do it alone. So a lot of people mentioned about this kind of sentence. So uh, co-creation, we have to uh, can be created by uh, only when expert and uh, partners each field are joined and then we are creating good uh, co-creation uh, value, new value. Okay. Let me, uh, so, uh, uh, but the most important thing is the we have to I, uh, identify pain point. Uh, pain point and challenge we faced, and then we are uh, through the cooperating and uh, suggest solution using the IoT area. So uh, today I just by inviting uh, expert from the each field, uh, each field. So uh, okay, so uh, I, I will introduce one by one. Next page. First is uh, Eugene Lombard from Korea, uh, uh, CEO of Sam Bar. And then second uh, partner is the Skinner from North, North America, Labi, uh, the CEO of Labi. Okay? Third one is the Huacom company, Mingye. Huacom company, VP Mingye. Last one is the uh, Advantage Asia team, Michael Huang, uh, will be present about the uh, Advantage Co-Creation program. Okay? So first, uh, first uh, presenter is uh, uh, from Eugene Robot, CEO, <coughs> Sam Bak, please. Thank you, Tony. Uh, very nice to see you. Uh, I'm going to spend about 10 minutes to talk about autonomous navigation solution and also fleet management system, which can be integrated into wise paths. During the last several years, in almost <laughs> Every industry, I personally believe that every industry, digital, transmo uh, digital transformation has become one of the key words to be successful in the future industry. Why are we talking about that? What's the reason all behind it? I think it's all about how we can create future market with a better speed and also better flexibility. So IoT and AI that we talked about yesterday, whole day, are the tools that can give you better flexibility and also the speed. And I believe that autonomous navigation is also the very good tool to give you the speed and, and flexibility as well. So let me just start with the global Okay, let me just start with the global trend in appliance and machinery industry. So as you can see here, these are the machines or appliance which became robotic appliance during the last several years. So such as building cleaning machine, vacuum cleaner, or forklift, and no more. They all became robotic appliance during the last several years. And what about this? These are the devices which has a wheels on it. So since this device has a wheels, you can manually push and move it around. 
So obviously, this device will become also the robotic devices. But the question is, who will be leading this global trend? You can simply say, oh, all the players manufacturer can lead this trend because they already have a market. They already know the market. They can do the job. However, the problem is, they don't have the robotic technology, which can be the risk. And at the same time, you can simply say, robotic manufacturer can also do the job. Problem is, they don't know the market. They don't know, the, they don't know enough about their customers. So it will take time, it, it can be even risk. So alternatives can be, oops, Alternative can be the autonomous navigation solution. So, in other words, if you put this autonomous navigation solution on top of this kind of manual machine, then it can immediately become a robotic machine. So there are three crucial elements in this autonomous navigation solution. First one is the sensor. So, robot has to understand the environment. So you need to have a sensor to acquire the, uh, the information from the uh, environment. So that is a crucial point. And also the second one is the navigation software. So you have to have a navigation software so that your machine can navigate in the environment. And third one is the fleet management system. Fleet management system is the coordinator. If you want to use more than one robot or more than one devices, it will coordinate different devices. So this Three key elements can be integrated into the wise pass. So I'm happy to say that we do have uh, this full autonomous navigation solution, especially together with uh, Advantech. So just to give you a better understanding about this concept, you can see. So we have a manual forklift, shopping cart, and manual pharmacy cart. If you put the autonomous navigation solution on top of it, then you don't need any more human. So you can self-navigate it by itself. And plus, if you have a fluid management system, then it can control the different devices simultaneously as well. So in the hospital, the pharmacy car can self-navigate it to deliver any pharmacy or any stuff. In the same manner, in the shopping center, the cart can follow you or even self-navigate it, going back to the charging station or even garage. And also you can see the same kind of self-navigating booklet as well in the factory. So you may ask me a question, is it really true? Can it be really immediately robotic devices? Yes. So just to, uh, as a proof of concept, we just purchased the shopping cart from the internet and put our autonomous navigation solution on top of it. And then as you can see here, this shopping cart can navigate by itself. So it's that simple. Yeah, isn't it funny? So I'm going to talk about individual element of the autonomous navigation solutions. First one is LiDAR sensor or sensors which can acquire information from the environment. As you can see here, this can generate the 3D point cloud data from the environment. So it has a wide field of view, 360 degree horizontally and 90 degree vertically. So it can be used for many different fields like logistics robot, industrial robot, and service robot as well. And also for the other application as well. So, question is, how, how can we use uh, this LiDAR for? So first of all, yeah, you can build a 3D map inside of the factory so that robot can navigate based on this map. <coughs> And also since this LiDAR sensor is a full 3D uh, map or a sensor, so you don't need any additional sensor because it doesn't have any blind spot. And also, we can use this LiDAR sensor for different purposes, such as 
AI object recognition or even location recognition. So for instance, this first picture is the panoramic image of the room which can be taken by just normal camera. So there is a bed, table, chairs, sofa, and TV. And these two images are the equivalent image but from the LiDAR sensor. So LiDAR sensor can give you this kind of image. So if we combine them together and apply the artificial intelligence algorithm, then we can have an object recognition like table, sofa, TV, whatever. However, it can additionally it can give us the exact location information of the individual object. So you already know the where the sofa is located, things like that. So yesterday we talked about face recognition. If we combine this LiDAR together with the face recognition, then not only the, the face recognition itself, but you can also know where the people are located. So this kind of LiDAR information or li uh, 3D point cloud data can be uploaded into the, the wise pass together. So that other devices or machine, which has a device on, can access to this kind of information as well. Let's talk about navigation software. So as you can see here, there are a lot of different types of robots. So outdoor robot, the laboratory robot, and omnidirectional robot, and the office robot, or the factory robot. These are all different types of robot. But thing is, these various robots run with the same navigation software. I, I'm only showing the, the, our in-house uh, in robot, but actually there are many companies which is already using our navigation solution so that they, they can move their machine. Yeah. So, okay. So this navigation solution can be also integrated into wise pass as well. The last one is fluid management system. So many cases we have to use the more than one robot or different types of devices which is moving. So in that case, we need to have a coordinate. So we can have a fleet management system. So for instance, let's say we have a different robot. We can assign different job into different robots so that they can collaborate with each other. And also they can even take the elevator into the different floor of the building. And we can also control the elevator or automatic door, which is located in the factory, so that you can you can control the devices and, and, and infrastructure as well. So this kind of the technology can be integrated into WisePass so that it will give you the better opportunity for the business. So I'm really happy to say that this kind of autonomous navigation solution can make your business even more competitive in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very impressed with to know about uh, how to co-create with the robot company and uh, 3D LiDAR uh, systems. So before, first time I visited to Eugene Robot, at that time they choose to use to, uh, to using our hardware platform first. And then we are just glo uh, glo uh, gradually to expand our business area. And then they are, they are considering to using our wide path solution and device one solution together. Thank you for your presentation, Sam. Okay? Next uh, is uh, the head of Skino, Nabi. Please see your presentation. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all having a wonderful morning. Uh, as we all know, a uh, healthy planet is a productive planet, an educated planet, and a safe planet. That goes to regions, that goes to corporations, and that goes to all of us. Uh, Sakino is developing a personalized and holistic telehealth care services platform which is fully integrated so that it focuses on community health and focuses on individual healthcare informatics. We are very happy to be partnered with Advantech. We really appreciate uh, the partnership that we have gained, as a result of which we have partnered with Microsoft. We look forward to meet Advantech inside 
you know, our inside champion, obviously Mr. Sean Jack. Looking forward to working with Mr. Clay Fazio, and definitely the opportunity that has been provided by Mr. Casey Liu and Mr. Milichang. Uh, one of the highlights that I'd like to bring about is uh, Mr. Wee News presentation this morning when he has put out health care as the first bullet in realizing a billion dollars in revenue for, by 2025. We are really looking forward to be a very significant part of that week and we really look forward to working with yourself and your team. Not only in the United States, but as my discussions with Mr. Casey Lou yesterday, very generous of spending so much time with me, so to speak, in other parts of the world from the Asia and other parts standpoint. What is Sukino? Sukino in Sanskrit means free of suffering, joy. Uh, I've been in telehealth very quickly here uh, for the last 15 years. Um, we have uh, implemented perhaps one of the largest telemedicine networks in the world that connected about 400 uh, district hospitals with 200 village resource centers connecting to 50 specialty hospitals in India that provided connectivity to millions of impoverished and unreached citizens. Uh, leading to which NASA has been much springboard, which led us to India. So Sukino, uh, as we all know from the healthcare standpoint, lack of connected care, fragmented ecosystem, rising healthcare costs. Uh, the Saffron Telehealth Platform uh, uh, provides for, again, holistic, personalized telehealth uh, services and access taking advantage of uh, artificial intelligence or, or you know, leading to extended intelligence and we are looking forward to taking advantage of the wise path platform from the IOT standpoint leading to AIOT. Uh, this is a picture uh, of a MVP showcase uh, as a result of the partnership that we gained with Advantech. We were selected to Microsoft uh, Inspire thanks to Sean and his team, and subsequently uh, Microsoft picked us up to put out this uh, Saffron Telehealth case at their Industry Experience Center in Microsoft as of September 9th. This unit provides for 11 measurements right now in terms of weight, temperature, pulse oxy, spiral, uh, carbon monoxide, respiration, 5 uh, CG, blood pressure, dermoscope, otoscope, stethoscope, uh, 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 so to speak. The second phase of it will provide for the access to uh, x-ray, fluoroscope, and ultrasound examination capabilities. The third phase will provide the access to connect to CAT, MR, uh, and uh, uh, PATH. So from the teleclinic case schematic, so to speak, what we are really looking forward to the partnership with uh, Advantech. Uh, if you see, uh, this is the device integration layer. Uh, this is where the agent sits. And this is all from the peripheral integration that leads to the portals uh, and so on and so forth. It is a ubiquitous platform. Uh, cost is always kept in perspective here. It has to be as affordable as possible. And this has to map to any kind of socioeconomic healthcare demography uh, affordability. So any third party biometric uh, devices, any third party hospital management systems, any third party uh, workflow systems, EMRs from, uh, 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 so to speak, uh, any uh, communication and transport appliance uh, that is permissible for telehealth delivery, and any permissible storage and distribution appliances. In other words, this platform has a device integration layer, a transport communication layer, uh, a storage layer, and a distribution layer. And at every layer, we are looking for extracting intelligence to generate very effective feedback systems, so to speak. Uh, our request and what we're looking forward to in the partnership with Advantech, uh, you know, uh, we certainly look forward to provisioning its scalability and the ability to connect to DICOM, as we all realize, you know, one of the things I realized in the telehealth uh, uh, in this journey 
is uh, uh, people that needed uh, CAT scans or DICOM examinations, CAT scans or MRIs, have refinanced their homes and lost their homes. Uh, you know, an average uh, MRI examination could cost anywhere between $2,000 and $5,000, so to speak. And, you know, we can make a tremendous difference, so to speak, from that standpoint. Uh, how can we put this out in an integrated environment? How can we connect urban and rural healthcare? How can we migrate and reverse migrate best practices? Uh, what can this partnership do to really disrupt the space and become a leader in telehealth? And the opportunity, I believe, is tremendous. So the collaboration, the key factors, affordability, being diagnostic level, otherwise it doesn't make any sense for telehealth delivery. We have to be industrial strength. Our portability is very important. Economical, globalization, personalization, uh, plug and play. It has to be available, secure, and provide for local as well as cloud storage because uh, reliability becomes a factor. There are areas where we can lose all modes of communication and how can we store information so that we can push it when we re, you know, realize uh, available uh, communication bandwidths. So having said this, you know, uh, I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, in the journey that we have led in telehealth, affordability, usability, reliability is very important. To keep it very simple, how can we uh, you know, connect to people how can we connect and enhance the quality of life? I think this partnership has a tremendous opportunity to do a groundbreaking disruption, so to speak, and be a leader in social entrepreneurship. And I believe this is a tremendous opportunity. Thank you. With IoT in medical field. Thank you, Ravi. Next, so ne next is uh, the VP of Qualcomm, uh, Ming Yan, will be uh, talking about DFSI with the uh, smart city solution. Okay, Ming Yan, please. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Casey Miller and uh, everyone all over the world. Welcome to Taiwan. Okay, um, before I do the presentation, maybe do a little bit commercial on Qualcomm. Okay. But, uh, like Tony said, Qualcomm is a real DFSI of uh, Atlantic. <laughs> Uh, is, is the uh, shareholder of Qualcomm, right? It was six months already. Okay. The previous two <laughs> company, <laughs> NBU. You, know, <laughs> you are here at DFS right now, okay? Yeah, okay. Unlike you know, the, the previous two speakers, they were, they were pretty focused on certain solutions and certain um, uh, the, uh, service. Uh, Qualcomm is SI. You know, we've done telecom services, we've done uh, high tech, <laughs> and also the uh, uh, traffic management system. Uh, mostly the devices that you see on the highway, the 80% of the devices are done by us, including the system. Okay. Um, but today I, I go to present to you that the traffic management system is the environmental management system. Um, let me give you a little bit of background about how the system uh, came up. Okay. Uh, I don't like the, the most of the developed country you know, so goes through the process that in the early days you focus on the economic development. So it's a lot of factory, right? You know, small factory, maybe a home factory, and there, there. Okay, so uh, the government uh, tried to manage those stuff. So uh, in Taiwan, they have a, a lot of the, uh, industry park, also the science park, to put all this the factory together so they build management and also can put a lot of facilities there, can manage it, this uh, factory. Okay, so. Um, I think you saw a lot of uh, information that the uh, um, environmental change, right? environmental uh, issue uh, because of climate change, so uh, people start paying attention to the uh, pollutions, right? the air pollution, <coughs> the air you breathe, the water you uh, drink every day. Right? But most of the pollution is generated from where? From factory, right? from factory, but some of maybe from the car traffic. But in that industry park, it's mostly generated from the factory. Right? So um, the government tried to uh, manage that. I mean, they asked the, the, the factory to do something. Right? Before you able to uh, uh, expect to uh, 
to the environment by putting up the air, right? you have to purify it, right? And also the water, mm -hmm. right? The, uh, the water uh, generated during the, the manufacturing process, right? So you have a certain state that, right? There is a certain state that if you don't meet this certain state that, you get a fine from the EPA, right? The government official. Uh, but, you know, the factory was south of the land, right? Every, every industrial company, more than south of the factory, but how does how does government official able to monitor that one by one? So they need a system. That's how this uh, IoT technology and advanced uh, white space fixing. Okay, so that's the whole story. Okay, <laughs> let me get to this. So I mean, putting IoT devices and also this service uh, is not the, the, the difficult part. The difficult part is you have to get the data. What kind of data you need to get, right? From the sensor, from a lot of stuff. But also in order you need to get what? <coughs> external data from the weather, the weather bureau. Why you need that information? Because it's a during the day, during the rainy day. Okay. The water power will be diluted, right? By the by the rain, right? So you won't get real data for the power you have set. Okay. Also the weather. Also the wind, right? <laughs> if the wind blow this way, right, where's, where's the source of the pollution? should be here, right? It's one more this way, so the source of pollution will be here. So you need to get that information, you want to get the real data, right? Um, but the beauty of service is this. You have to do analysis and action. Once you have the data, right, you have a lot of data from uh, different sensors and from external external information. How the coral relationship, like I said, the wind, the water, okay, and uh, the rain, how you get the, the real data? So you need a, a platform, that's where the white space fits in, right? You have the core relationship. Like the third point, the, 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 what the rainy running part of it, and how this, the change of the, uh, the water quality. What's the temperature, what's the pH, what uh, pH level, what's the uh, SS, the suspended solid, uh, uh, the, the uh, material inside this water. So once you have that, you have that the uh, um, analysis come out. So you're able to diagnose it. Say, is this water quality fits the center? Okay, you said need to pay attention to it, right? So you have the uh, alarm services. Right? We do have alarm services, okay. and also we have what? We have a real-time monitoring system that you can you can monitor it through video. Right, this is the video. It gets to it. Also, we have a dashboard. It's on the side. Look at look at the dashboard. You know this quality of water today. Right, so you don't have to like <coughs> what's what's the pH two point five is low. You just look at the smile. Okay, so you know what to do today. Mm. Right, look, look. Okay, so that that's the whole scenario. Okay, let's get to the detail. So you, you I think you have. I'm very familiar with this event for this couple of days. I won't bore you with this because I don't know it also. <coughs> so this, this is the real scenario. Okay. I think I need to point out this okay, uh, uh, We use white space device. A okay, device will let you to check the uh, uh, the sensor's quality. Uh, sensors, what's the sensor normal at normal? And also let you to get a dashboard. Okay. So this dashboard actually uh, it's customized to uh, fit the government's uh, like you can you can check the real time real time on level of the water quality or air pollution. So also, you can get historical data. You need to get the historical data to get that. Say what happened in that certain spot, right? This spot, for example, this spot. The government official able to check that. <coughs> so this this is the decision architecture. Um, it's not only you can uh, check from your computer, also we have uh, the uh, apps message services. Once the, 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 uh, the water quality or air pollution was over the uh, threshold, you get a, get a warning or message. So the, uh, the government official can able to check what really happened. Also can get, uh, the uh, bureau can send a fine to the factory because there's regulation that asks you to make certain statements. So you have to you have to follow. Okay, that's a mandatory. Okay. So the, this is the uh, 
So that's actually we have a booth outside. So if you're interested, check the real data out there. The real system there. You can check the uh, what's the the quality on the certain um, the international park. Okay. And this is air pollution. Same thing. I mean, same idea, right? You get a certain sparks. You get the information. Send it to wise pass. Get another system. Okay, and then you can check the uh, um, what the, uh, the, the dashboard. Okay, what's what's happening? Yes. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't know about that. <coughs> oh, okay. Uh, it's actually that it's a dashboard, right? At the, at the end of the day, you may have a dash, dashboard. But this data, once they accumulate, for well, enough data, I can do a trend analysis in a certain area. Okay, so the, what's the water quality of the air, the air quality in that certain area? And they will ask the uh, of the uh, factory to do something like that. Okay, that's my presentation. I mean, you were interested to see the real system, it's outside. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, is uh, lastly, uh, Automated HI team's micro farm will be introduced automated cooperation program. So, Chris. As says Tony. And hello partners. Uh, just a couple of minutes ago, the, during the break, the Tony is the first man with, with me. And they say, I think it's your first time to meet like the, our partners, like Skino and uh, the Eugene Robas. And uh, do, you, do you study the, the presentation or slides? Also? Sure, definitely. For the for the Eugene Robots, I definitely, as I say, I definitely need an intelligent wheelchair when I get involved. So, so my, my son don't worry about me, about my late life. And so, the Nabi jump into the conversation and they say, I say, well, what, what's your business? He said, a portable medical the, the device. I say, yeah, that's another one. I, I need it for my late life. <laughs> for so, my high hospital. It's in the high hospital. <laughs> So today, thanks for the partners' wonderful sharing. We we know the IoT is very big scope, and no one can do it alone. So especially the IoT structure is pretty complex from the age, eyes, past, SaaS, and the most important, the domain knowledge in different industry like the hospital, manufacturing, retail, water treatment is so totally different. So how can we do that? So the Ventec aims to build an industrial IoT ecosystem with partners. So that you are specialists with the domain knowledge in the industrial operations and provide services to clients. So today I'm going to introduce our co-creation program. That is a very good, very good business model with you. We can embrace the IoT future together. Okay, let's start from this diagram. I, I know some, maybe some of you already know this diagram, but this diagram is fully describes how the Ventec build the co-creation ecosystem uh, to enable we call the DFA side, domain focus side, to realize the digital transformation of industries. So the first, the wise pass, we call the IoT cloud platform. We provide the public cloud or the private cloud. That we call wise stack. We have the demo outside to enable the. SRV developer to integrate their software and the, the Ventec hardware into a cloud IoT solutions. Then we, we call this the first type of the co-creation, SRP co-creation. Then Advantech also co-create with the DFA side. Maybe some of the SI are you are new IoT SI or the traditional SI or the in-house SI. You own the very important the domain knowledge and the capabilities for like installation, customization, and you can provide after services to clients to, for the end users. So the DFA side can take, we develop the well develop the solutions SRP to deploy for the end user in your projects in any industries. So I will go more details about that. So first type is the SRP co-creation. The objective is we aim to co-create the scalable IoT solution with you and uh, through our WisePass platform and our hardware products. So as, as I mentioned, the SRP developers, sometimes like the individual software vendors, they can integrate the hardware and software into the developable SRP. And Advantech will aim to bring uh, 
attack this solution to a product base, not a project base. So together we do the joint marketing and the business development, and we can do the global business. And I know sometimes the developer with very limited resources. So you can leverage the advanced our worldwide global channels, and we can sell it together. And for some case, we do a little bit the sponsorship of our cooperation to accelerate your solution development. Okay, this is one of our cooperation case with a partner called P Square in Taiwan, 2018. So. P-Square owns a very innovative technology we call the algorithm, we call it RTLS, the real-time location system. That, that can be used in any kind of area like the building, factory, hospital, or the hotel. Then, in this case, the P-Square integrates their software, the, the RTLS, with the advanced tech hardware like locators or the tech on WisePass platform and to make it a scalable and a duplicable solution and that is the best RTLS services. Then through our global sales network, we can bring their solution to the worldwide. So this, this hospital has been deployed, has been deployed with the RTLS services. So I, I think the Taiwan is the first step to test and to finalize this SRP. And the next step will bring their solutions uh, to the worldwide, like the Europe or the US hospitals. And also at the same time, we will list their SRP on our marketplace. Okay, this is the second type, the DFSI, like the Huacan company. We will establish the partnership with the regional DFSI partners. So together we can jointly promote and implement the wise path and the same SRP within the region. So we expect the DFSI cooperation partner will establish a core team with Advantech. Then we can together co-work co on a business development, what kind of the solution we can deploy, and the what regions, what customers we can reach. Then we doing the joint business development. And besides the better pricing support from Advantech, we do some sponsorship, and uh, for Huacan we invest it around 20% to accelerate our DFSI co-creation program. So this is the very earliest with our DFSI co-creation with a company, Nippon Ray. I know maybe you, you know that Nippon Ray is a Japanese company and the focus on the so is a software and a system integrator for the enterprise and the B2P sector. So in this case, we aim to together, we can join promote the wise path and the solution so we do a like um, 10 million US dollars FT investment also to form a core team and the Nippon Ray double his employees IoT team with the Ventech and the get some wise pass certification certification. Then we do a joint marketing like the demo room, IoT news or the joint solution day. Then the last one, we they can leverage our sales network network. So we can together and go to the customer side and uh, to promote our solutions and uh, what is your demand for, uh, for your project. Mm. Okay, this is very typical, the co-creation process. So, the first, maybe co-creation concept initiation. Maybe later we can have a deeper talk about what kind of your company capabilities and uh, your market insights, your domain knowledge, and uh, we can see what kind of co-creation we can have. Then we go to the business plan development and to describe how you can co-create with Advantech. Maybe you have the good solutions, maybe we can integrate together. So then we, we can offer you the official proposal, then start, we sign the cooperation agreement, then we do the rest of things like the solution development or the technical integration. So this is so far our partners from in different domains, industrial I 4.0, machine to intelligence, and the free management, because we, we believe that the domain knowledge plays, plays a very important role to deploy the solutions in, and the, to, make the, to meet the demands for the customers. So we, maybe you, you will be the next one on this world, and the, only when we cooperation together, we can create a better IoT futures. 
So this is a this is my short term presentation because the time limit I uh, just is a brief introduction. So maybe later we can have more talk if you feel free to talk with me and then we can go deeper for co creation. Thank you everybody. Co-creation program. So, uh, both of uh, Nabi, Nabi and uh, Sam will be uh, learn from the Hakam, and then you will be a uh, co-creation partner in the future. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, this is my uh, last page. I just uh, uh, finished uh, this uh, panel discussion the, by following the sentence uh, that English and uh, Chinese is same pronunciation. Have so putting up co-creation of phase two. Putting co-creation on your journey. Thank you. Thank you.